Hi there, I'm Evangelist Matthew Lee and welcome to the Weekly Word of Encouragement. Family, today's message I've actually given a title and the title that I've assigned to it is Supply and Demand. And the first portion of scripture that I have for you is one that I believe we are all familiar with, one that we all like to stand on and confess regularly, and that is Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 from the New King James Version. And it reads as follows. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Family, isn't that a beautiful portion of scripture? And I know it's one that many of us like to stand on, that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We stand on that whenever we are short financially or trusting God for some financial breakthrough or for him to give us something or bless something that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So family, Let's confess that scripture because confession brings possession because the Bible says that life and death lie in the power of the tongue. So let's confess positively. Let's confess together. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, family, we've just confessed that and I've heard many Christians confess the scripture like that time and time and time again. However, the conf- there is actually an error in the confession that we have just made. What did we say? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, correct? Well, if you go back to the scripture, what does the scripture actually say? It says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So you see, family, that is where the problem comes in right there. My God shall supply all your need, not my God shall supply all of my need. We love to put a demand on that scripture. We love to put a demand on God to say, God, you will supply my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Supply and demand. He will supply when we demand. But the truth of the matter is, family, there's more to the scripture than what we see there. And that is why it speaks about your instead of my. Why we can't go and say, my God shall supply all of my needs because it says, my God shall supply all of your needs. And I believe we can see this if we go back a couple of verses to verse 15. So once again, Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 to 19 from the New King James Version, and it reads, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but that I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Ephroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So you can see right there, family, that there is more to the scripture than meets the eye. This confession that we love to make is actually a prayer that Paul is praying over the Philippians. Why is he praying this prayer for the Philippians? Well, we've just read it there. It says, when it says there, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. And they sent him gifts and gifts again. In other words, what were they doing? They were giving towards Paul. They were supporting his ministry. And therefore, at the end of this, in verse 19, Paul prayed a blessing over them that because of their generosity, because of their giving, that he would then pray that his God, that Paul's God, that our God shall supply all your need, all you you who are generous, all you who have given and supported my ministry. He shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So you see how the dynamic of supply and demand is changing here. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, supply and demand. It is in fact Paul that is placing the demand 
on God to supply the needs for those who are generous towards him, for those that have supported his ministry family. And that's the key right there. That we, we like I said earlier, we like to stand on the scripture. We like to demand it of God that he will supply all of our needs. But if you go and look at the scripture, God is actually placing a demand on us as well. So before we can place our demand on him to supply our needs, we need to fulfill his demand to us. And what is that family? His demand to us is, as it says there, that we be generous, that we support the work of the ministry family. And that is what the Lord wants from us. The Lord wants us to be generous. And, and that just reminds me of another, another portion of scripture that just links up so beautifully with this. And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I'm first going to be reading verses 6 to 8 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pleasure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So family, what is that portion of scripture speaking about again? Once again, it is speaking about generosity. It's speaking about giving. Other translations say God delights in an extravagant giver, a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. That is what the Lord delights himself in family. And when we are generous, when we give freely, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, when we give generously, we are planting seeds family. And there's a universal principle of seed time and harvest. When you plant a seed, you will reap a harvest. When you sow one milli seed or corn seed in to the ground, do you get one back? No, you get a stalk and on the stalk are cobs and the cobs have hundreds of seeds on them, family. It is a multiplied harvest and it's the same with us. When we give, when we sow seed, it returns to us multiplied. According to Luke 6.38, in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured out into our lap. The amount that we give determines the amount that we get back, family. It's as simple as that. If you want to reap, you first need to sow. A a farmer does not go and stand and look at his field and say, where's my crop? If he hasn't gone and first planted the seeds in order for the crop to be able to come up. And it's the same for us. We cannot put a demand on God to supply all of our needs if we have not first sown our seeds, family. We need to sow those seeds so that God can supply all of our needs. Because if you go and read the same portion of scripture from 2 Corinthians, right in verse 10, it says... For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. So family, in that portion of scripture, it is speaking about generosity and it is speaking about seeds. It is saying that God has given us the seeds that we need to sow. Everything that you have in this life, the clothes on your back, the roof over your head, the car that you drive, the wife that you sleep next to every night, the job that you go to every day, the food in your stomach, everything that you have is a gift to you from God. Every good thing is a gift from above. Why, family? Because God is the creator of the universe, and as the creator of the universe, all things in the universe belong to him. Therefore, everything that you have is not actually yours. It's a gift to you from God. In other words, it is God providing you with seeds. Everything that you have is not for you to keep the whole time. It is seeds for you to sow. And what does this portion of scripture say there? It says, God is the one who provides seed to the farmer. Now, I particularly like that there, he provides seed to the farmer. Why does he provide seed to the farmer? Because he knows what a farmer does with seeds. A farmer doesn't sit there and eat his seeds. No, a farmer takes the seeds, he prepares the ground, he sows the seeds into the ground and he waters it and everything that needs to be done in order for it to produce a harvest. So what is that saying? It's saying God provides seeds to the farmer. 
everything that you have as a seed that he has provided to you as a farmer. And the portion or the amount of seeds that you have depends on the kind of farmer you are, whether you're going to eat all your seeds or whether you're going to be the wise farmer that sows all of your seeds to reap a harvest. And that doesn't mean you must not take all the clothes off of you and go and sow it. No, because what does it follow? It says, and then bread to eat. So what is that saying? It's saying that God provides us with seeds to sow, but he also provides us with bread to eat, that we can eat these things, that we will have more than enough for what we need, and we will then have abundance to sow so that we can reap harvest, so that our multiplied harvest, once again, we can eat our bread and sow our seeds so that our harvest can multiply. And that's how God takes us from glory to glory to glory, from riches to riches to riches and all these kinds of things, family. You see, family, your next harvest is in the seed that's in your hand. But what are you going to do with that seed? Are you going to eat it or are you going to sow it? If that seed does not meet a need, sow it as a seed. It's as simple as that, family. If, if, if it's too much for you to eat, sow it as a seed and watch how the Lord will multiply it. Watch how the Lord will multiply you. And then you can put a demand on God because you've got seeds in the ground. You've been the wise farmer. You've been generous in your giving. And therefore, you have met God's demand on you. God's demand on you. God's demand on us as born again believers is to be generous. Now, why do I say that, family? Because at the end of the day, we are called to become more and more Christ-like, correct? Well, what is Christ? What is God? They are givers. They have given of themselves since the beginning of time. John 3.16, a scripture that we also love to quote, for God so loved the world that he gave family. God is a giver. We are called to be Christ-like. We are called to be more and more like God. Therefore, we are called to be givers because it is in our giving, it is in our generosity that the world around us sees that there's something different about these Christians because at the end of the day, the carnal nature wants to keep all of our seeds and eat all of our seeds and get fat but what happens? Then the harvest field lays there empty and we can't produce a multiplied harvest. And God wants us to produce a multiplied harvest. He wants us to be faithful stewards of the seeds that he's given us that we can multiply. And that is how we grow in kingdom finances, family. When we meet God's demand on us to be generous, then we can place a demand on God to supply all of our needs. As, as Paul did there in, in, in Philippians chapter 4, my God shall supply all your needs. Why? Because the Philippians were generous. Because the Philippians partnered with his ministry and assisted him in the work that he was doing to build and advance the kingdom of God. And I'm not going to get into a whole message on tithes and offerings and where the tithes should go and all these kinds of things in supporting the works of the ministry. But family, that is what we're called to do. We are called to be generous givers because when we do that, we meet God's demand on us. And then we can place a demand on God for him to supply our needs. When we sow our seeds, when we return our tithes to the church and stuff like that, it's the pastor's responsibility to pray that God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, as Paul did in Philippians chapter 4, family. And another thing, a lot of people like to say, ah, oh, but the pastor's just going to keep my money so that he can buy a fancy car and a fancy house. No, family, what does Paul say there that is just so true? He says, not that I seek the gift, but that I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. And that's just so true, family. A lot of people say, you know, the pastor likes to preach on money because he wants money, 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 money. No, family, that, if, if that's the pastor's heart, then he needs to deal with God with that. It's not your responsibility. But the pastor's heart in that case should be not that he seeks the gift, but he, that he seeks the fruit that abounds to your account, that he seeks the harvest that you will receive so that you can be abundantly blessed. Because the pastor knows the principle. The pastor's applied the principle. And, and we then want to see other Christians around us applying the principles as well so that they too can be blessed, so that they too can walk in God's abundance and that they can place a demand on God to meet all of their needs. Because if we go back once again to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Family, what does it say? God will generously provide all you need. In other words, that Paul, that sentence right there is perfectly lining up with Paul's scripture in 
Philippians chapter 4, that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see, family, if we want him to supply our needs, we first have to meet his demands and then we can place a demand on him for him to supply all of our needs. And it becomes a beautiful circle, a a harmonious thing working together like that that God places a demand on us we place a demand on God and God supplies our needs and from that supply he demands again that we give more and then we can place a demand and then he'll supply more and it becomes a beautiful cycle family the way I often like to explain it is each and every promise in the word of God has a certain term and condition linked to it in other words If we want God to provide generously for all we need, we need to apply the term and condition that is linked to it. In other words, meet the demand. And that is that we need to be generous in our giving family. For example, salvation, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he died and rose again, you will be saved. Salvation is the promise, but the term and condition linked to it is that we need to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he died and rose again, family. And it goes like that consistently. So supply and demand is just a different way of saying terms and conditions apply at the end of the day, family. So just to recap on everything that I've said here, God places a demand on us. That demand is for us to fulfill the term and condition that he's applied to his promises. In other words, in this particular case, to be generous. God has placed a demand on us to be generous. And when we fulfill that demand, we can then demand that he supplies all of our needs. We can stand on the promise and receive the promise, and then he will supply all of our needs. And when he supplies all of our needs, once again, he places a demand on us to be generous with it. And once we've been generous with it, once again, we can apply a, a, a put a demand on him to supply our needs. And he will do it again and again and again. And God will take us from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and from victory to victory, to new levels and new heights. Family, it's a, it's a simple thing of literally just applying the process. If we meet God's demand, we can place a demand and He will supply all of our needs, family. So I want to encourage you go and find similar scriptures to this in the Bible, promises from the Word of God that you can stand on, and go and look what the term and condition is. Go and look what the demand is on you so that God can supply whatever it is that He's promised. Because at the end of the day, the promises in the Word of God are yes and amen. And if we stand on those promises, and if we meet the demand or the terms and conditions, God will supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I want to encourage you, family, to do just that. Thank you, family. I hope that this message has blessed you and encouraged you and given you some food for thought. And before I end, I'd just like to close in prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this day, that this is the day that you've made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for your word and the advice in your word, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for each and every single person listening, myself included, Lord, that you will help us to Take from this message what we needed to, Lord, so that we can learn to apply the terms and conditions of your word, Lord, so that we can see from your word what your demand is on us. Like in this case, Lord, to be generous, Lord. Help us, Lord, to meet your demand so that we can place a demand on you to fulfill your promise, to supply all of our needs, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that as you supply our needs time and time again, Lord, you place a new demand on us to be even more generous, Lord. And that is how you take us from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and from victory to victory. And I thank you, Lord, for that each and every one of us, that as we apply this, Lord, that you will do a supernatural work in us, through us, and for us. And we give you, Lord, all the praise, the glory, and the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching my video. I trust that the content of the message blessed you and encouraged you. And if it did, I'd like to ask you to please hit the share button to help us spread this message and to get it out there to your friends and family so that they too may be blessed by this message. And before you leave, please remember to give this video a thumbs up drop a comment, let me know what you think about the content of this message. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, I'd like to invite you to please head over to the Evangelist Matthew Lee Facebook page or YouTube channel where you'll find many videos similar to this that I've created to bless you and encourage you from the Word of God. If you watched this message today and were touched by this message and feel like you want to give your heart to the Lord and make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would love to invite you to please click on the link in the description of this video that says salvation 
mission. And if you watch this message and were blessed by this message and feel led to sow a seed into the ministry or to partner with us on a monthly basis, I'd like to ask you to please click on the link in the description of this video that says giving. Alternatively, at the bottom of the screen right now is the ministry's banking details as well as our Snapscan QR code. And lastly, I'd just like to ask you to please go and like, follow and subscribe to all my social media accounts if you haven't already to be kept up to date and in the loop with everything that's happening in the ministry and every time we upload a video just like this one. Thank you, family. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless.